Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. We continue reading in Thalathat Al-Usul wa Adillatiha. Al-Qira'a fi Kitab Thalathat Usul wa Adillatiha li Al-Imam Al-Mujaddid Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullahu ta'ala. We have been really reading about Al-Islam and that it is three stages. Al-Islam wal-Iman wal-Ihsan. And it has proceeded that and Islam, it has five pillars. Wa Islam Allahu, khamsa tu arkan. We have discussed those affairs. Alhamdulillah, something from a bit of detail. And likewise, after that, we have seen that the second stage of the Deen, first affairs, that the Deen of Allah is thalath muratib al Islam wa iman wa ihsan. Wa Islam khamsa khamsa tu arkan. And al iman. Lahu sitta tu arkan. We have discussed the affairs uh, with regards to these six principles. Likewise, iman it has six principles and six pillars and foundations. And uh, as for the third stage and the highest rank of the deen, the highest rank of the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal, it is al martaba tu al thaditha al ihsan al ihsan. And the author he says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala Al Armartabatu Tharitha Al Ihsanu Ruknun Wahidun Ruknun Wahidun the third stage meaning from the stages of the Deen is Al Ihsan and it is one pillar. One pillar. Al Islam it has five pillars. The first Martaba Al Mar Al Martabatul Ula and Al Iman it has six pillars. The second level Al Martabatu Thaniya. أما المرتبة الثالثة الذي هو الإحسان فله ركن واحد. It has one. It has one pillar. It has one pillar. The author he says, وهو أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه. فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك. And that is that you must worship Allah as if you see Him. And if you are not able to see Him, then at least know that He sees you. Then verily, then verily. He sees, he sees you. The author he says al martaba tu thalitha al ihsan. Al ihsan, it means linguistically uh, al itqan wa ijada. Itqanu shay wa ijada to who, to 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 do something precisely, and to master an affair and to do it with precision, and to do it well and in the best manner. This is called al ihsan. This is called Al Ihsan and this is to master something and to perfect it. Ahsana Yuhsinu Ahsin Ihsanan Bimana Atkana wa Ajada Atkana wa Ajada to do something very well and to do something with precision and to do something properly and precisely. Also and he considering linguistic to master it. To master it with precision. But as for the definition in the legislation, then uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he has defined it with ihsan, he has defined it precisely, and he has defined it in the best way, in the best manner. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam in just a few words, and these few words is what the author he has mentioned here as the definition as well. And if we remember the definition of the author he used for Al Iman, likewise is from the statements of the Prophet. And here, as he defines as well in these three fundamental principles, Al Ihsan, the third level of the deen, his definition also is from the statement of the Messenger, meaning the, the definition that the author he has mentioned, Rahimahullah. And that is to worship Allah as if you see Him. And if you do not see him, then know that he sees you. Then verily he sees you. I mean, we need to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sees, he sees the servant and he sees the slave. The author, he mentioned some evidences for this. And he has said, uh, Rahimahullah, what dalil 
what dalilu qawluhu ta'ala and the evidence for this this level of al-ihsan in this stage is the statement of Allah the most high inna Allah ma'alladhina ittaqaw wal ladhina hum muhsinun that verily Allah he is with those who have at taqwa the people of at taqwa and he is with those who have al ihsan and he is with those people who believe in him and obey him and comply to his commandments subhanahu wa ta'ala and stay away from his pro- prohibitions and he is with those people who do that with precision and, and who worship him precisely remembering him and hoping for him alone and uh, remembering the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and complying to that outwardly so therefore they have mastered their worship and he perfecting it inwardly and outwardly striving against their souls and these are those whom Allah has mentioned he is with them and this is referring to the ma'iyya of Allah azza wa jal and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the creation in general all of them by way of his knowledge وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ and this has preceded whenever we have discussed the issue of Al-Qadr and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has encompassed all things in knowledge and he is with the, 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 the entire creation by way of his knowledge subhanahu wa ta'ala but as for the people of At-Taqwa and the people of Al-Ihsan and the people of Al-Iman the righteous and the pious believers then he is with them uh, also in general by way of his knowledge but he is with them by his aid and support and he guides them and he directs them and he protects them and he uh, assists them and aids them and he facilitates for them to do good and to be protected from harm subhanahu wa ta'ala inna allah ma'al ladhina taqaw wal ladhina hum muhsinun and like this the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whenever he was with his companion in the cave whenever they're fleeing from the mushrikeen making hijrah and his companion of course abu bakr radiyallahu anhu whenever they were afraid uh, Abu Bakr was afraid that maybe they would be captured and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he told him that tahzan inna allah ma'ana inna allah ma'ana do not grieve do not be afraid verily, verily Allah is with us verily Allah is with us meaning this uh, the ma'iyah uh, at-ta'yid wa nusra wa tawfiq wa tasdeed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will aid and support them and help them bil hifz and protect them and to keep them safe and to direct them in la tahzan inna allah ma'ana so this is from the the fruits of al ihsan and from the benefits of perfecting the worship of allah azza wa jalla with sincerity and striving to comply to the sunnah inwardly and outwardly and that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will be with that person and he will aid him and support him being with him meaning by his aid and his support and his protection and his guidance subhanahu wa ta'ala as for ar-rab subhanahu wa ta'ala it has preceded annahu ala al-arsh istawa that he has arisen above the throne in a manner befitting his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise he says wa qawluhu wa tawakkal ala al-aziz ar-rahim الذي يراك حين تقوم وتقلبك في الساجدين إنه هو السميع العليم. He mentioned the statement of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and Allah He mentions, وتوكل على العزيز الرحيم. And put all of your trust and faith, put your reliance and dependence entirely upon Al Aziz Al Rahim. وتوكل على على العزيز الرحيم, the one who is Almighty and the one who is most merciful. الذي يراك حين تقوم who the one who sees you when you stand up he, referring to the night prayers but he sees you at all times سبحانه وتعالى الذي يراك حين تقوم وتقلبك في الساجدين and your movements among those who fall prostrate and he, meaning in the five daily prayers Allah سبحانه وتعالى he sees he sees them وتقلبك في الساجدين whenever you are uh, and, and your movements as you fall prostrate with those who pray in the congr- congregational prayer. Inna hu was samiul adim. Verily, he is the uh, he and only he is the all hearer and the all knower. And we have seen that <clears throat> the meaning of an ihsan is to perfect the worship and to do it sincerely and to hope for the reward from Allah alone and to do it according to the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to remember Allah in that worship and to have that heart attached and connected to Him alone entirely during that act of worship, not turning 
and not directing one's attention to anything from the creation, any individual or any praise or hoping for anything from the creation whatsoever. Rather, at the time of that worship, the heart is con connected entirely and hoping entirely for the reward from Allah and the promise of Allah and the pleasure of Allah and the love of Allah, hoping that it's accepted from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and performing it according to that which has been displayed to us and clarified to us by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This one he has perfected. He has perfected the action. So after learning how to perform it outwardly according to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, this is part of that perfection. And the other part is to make sure that one does it sincerely and entirely for Allah and he's truthful with that action and he performed it for Allah alone. And from the example of that is as salat as it's being referred to in these in these verses. Whenever you stand for the, for, for the prayer, and put your faith and your trust and reliance upon Al-Aziz Al-Rahim. And this is because that a person who is relying on something, whenever a person he has reliance and trust and dependence, then the one that he, he has reliance and dependence for and his hope and his faith in is hoping that either he will protect him from some harm or some difficulty or he will bring about some good for him. And at Aziz, he is the one who is powerful and strong and no one can overcome him. So it's very, very suitable to put one's reliance upon him, especially in times of danger. Rather, he is the only one that one should rely upon. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is the only one who can perfect, protect from danger. And he is at Aziz. La ghaliba lahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can overcome him in his command, in his power, in his authority. Tabaraka wa ta'ala, therefore trusting on him alone. Trusting in him alone, this is how the heart will find safety and security. And this is how the one will find success. And likewise, whenever a believer is hoping for some good, and he's putting his faith and trust and reliance to obtain good, then it should be only upon Ar-Rahim, the one who is the most merciful and kind to his servants, and he gives from his grace, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here we see, if a believer, he remembers this likewise in the prayer, that the one who can protect him, and the one who can aid him, and the one who can support him only is Allah. And the command is entirely for him, and no one can go against his command or do anything except for with his will. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, who will aziz? And likewise, at the same time, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his might, in his power, likewise, he is ar-Rahim the most merciful and kind, and, the, and he is the, the most gracious subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to give the good, then, then the heart is attached to him. And these verses, how do they conclude? They conclude, إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ Alim. And likewise, he, Allah, he says, and verily, he is the only, and he and only he is the all-hearing and the all-knowing. And to remember, likewise, whenever one is performing that action, for example, like the Salat, that Allah, he, he, he hears him, and Allah knows of his situation. And if his heart is uh, turning to uh, the creation or hoping for some worldly gain, Allah, he knows that. And whenever he is reciting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he hears him. And Allah knows what is in his heart, and he knows if he is focusing or if he is not paying attention. And he knows what he is uh, doing and in the affairs that he is performing. And the one who remembers this, he will fear Allah and he will hope in him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, this will be from the greatest means uh, to perfect the worship. To perfect the worship, to remember that Allah he is the Almighty. And likewise, to remember that Allah he is the most merciful. And likewise, to remember that Allah he is the all-hearing and also the all-seeing. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows everything about the servant at every time and wherever he may be. And like this, the author, he mentioned the next verse as an evidence. وَقَوْلُهُ وَمَا تَكُنْ فِي شَأْنٍ وَمَا تَكُنْ فِي شَأْنٍ وَمَا تَجْرُ مِنْهُ مِنْ قُرْآنٍ وَلَا تَعْمَلُونَ مِنْ عَمَلٍ إِلَّا كُنَّا عَلَيْكُمْ شُهُودًا إِذْ تُفِيدُونَ فِي إِذْ تُفِيدُونَ فِي And he mentions the, uh, the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the meaning of which is neither you Meaning, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do any deed or recite any portion of the Qur'an, nor you, mankind, do you do any deed, good or evil, but we are witness thereof when you are doing it. And nothing is hidden from your Lord so much as the weight of an Adam or a small ant on the earth or in the heaven. Now, not uh, what is less than that, nor what is greater than that, but is written in a clear record. وَمَا تَكُونُوا فِي شَأْنٍ وَمَا تَتْسُلُ مِنْهُ مِنْ قُرْآنٍ وَلَا تَعْمَلُونَ مِنْ عَمَلٍ إِلَّا كُنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ شُهُودًا إِذْ تُفِيدُونَ فِي إِذْ تُفِيدُونَ فِي وَمَا يَعْزُبُ عَنْ رَبِّكَ مِنْ مِثْقَالِ ذَرَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ وَلَا وَلَا أَسْفَرَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَلَا أَكْبَرَ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ so therefore, in order to reach the status of Al-Ihsan is to learn and to know. 
And again, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has defined al ihsan is to worship Allah as if you see Him, and uh, if not, then to know that He that He sees you, Subhanahu wa Taala. So these verses they they mention this and they clarify this that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He is aware of the servant and and He sees the servant. And he knows the situation of the servant and he hears him and uh, he knows all about his situation and to remember that. And to remember that. This is the first stage. To remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he hears all things. To remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he knows all things and that he sees all things. And to know that uh, one is a slave of Allah and to remember his rububiyyah and his lordship and his power and authority and to remember his beautiful names and lofty attributes. And then to bring this to to mind and to have this in the heart and aware of this at the time of worship, this is considered al ihsan. And the scholars they mentioned that the reality of al ihsan is al muraqaba, uh, al muraqaba, and yuraqib al abdu rabbahu fi ibadatihi. That a slave he will be observant that Allah is observing him, and he will have al muraqab. Al muraqaba is to observe and to be awake and aware. Meaning to be awake and aware that Allah is aware of him and that Allah sees him and that there is nothing that is hidden from him and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows all things. And to remember this and to worship him in that manner. Because the one who remembers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he sees him. And to the one who remembers how powerful and strong Allah is and how uh, the command is in his hands alone subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise the one who remembers how merciful and gracious Allah is and how kind he is to his servants then one will strive to do what is pleasing to him and to perform the action of worship in the best manner and to perfect that inwardly uh, inwardly and, and outwardly inwardly and outwardly this is from the meaning of al-ihsan this is from the meaning of Al-Ihsan. So the ulama, they have mentioned, uh, the author, he mentioned here in this text that Al-Ihsan, it has one pillar. But the ulama have mentioned that it has two stages. Although it's one pillar, and Allah tarahu tukum tarahu yaraka. That this is, the fir- this is the pillar of that, that, uh, that level of the deen, Al-Ihsan. But this pillar, it has two stages. It has two stages and one is higher than the other. Although the stage of Al-Ihsan is the highest stage of the deen, then even inside of that stage there are, uh, it fluctuates and it varies. And there's no way to reach the second stage or the highest stage of Al-Ihsan except first by going through, through the first stage. Except by going through the first stage. From uh, the beneficial sources to study these affairs that we have been studying together, uh, in this text particularly about the pillars of Al-Islam and the pillars of Al-Iman and now we have the pillar of Al-Ihsan of course uh, a student or a believer can refer to some of the explanations of the scholars uh, of of this particular text Al-Usul al no doubt this is a, a resource that one will, will benefit from but uh, also there is another resource that I have referred to many times and advised the brothers and sisters to obtain and, uh, and to show great concern in reading and understanding and using it as a guide in their home to teach their family and to sit and discuss the affairs of the deen with their family. And that is the Durus al Muhimma, the Amit al Ummah by Sheikh ibn Baz rahimahullah ta'ala with the explanation of Sheikh Abdul Razak. And if a person wanted to find a summarization, of the affairs uh, that we have been discussing, that's the that's a, a beneficial place to look, and, and that is and, and and other than that as well, can find a, a summarization of Al Ihsan, a summarization of the pillars of Iman and Islam, and, and uh, the affairs of it Tawheed, and it's very beneficial and has been translated, and it's very good. Uh, for a, a believer to purchase that book and to have it in his home and to read it nightly with their family or weekly with their family or twice a week or every night or every morning uh, and sit with their husband and wife or sit with the children, all of them together and take turns reading. And even, I'm not sure about the translated version, but I know the original version in Arabic, it has stars and he, you, you flip a few pages and there's a star, meaning that you just read this amount and it's made for the imams to read in the masjid. 
And after the prayer to read just a small portion, even if a person were to follow that, to just read a small portion a day and to review it and go over with his family. Uh, beginning from the beginning of the book until the end, this is very beneficial. This is very beneficial and uh, to, to, to do, and I suggest this for, for the brothers. Those who have the Arabic, alhamdulillah, they read the Arabic. Those who are not proficient in Arabic, then they, they do not uh, just neglect the issue. Rather, they get the English and they read it with their family. This is this is this is uh, this is uh, advice that that I have for the noble brothers and sisters. But if a person uh, wanted to go to more detail and to to find more detail of these affairs, like I mentioned, that's a book that would be summarized and, and suitable for the general Muslims, as the, as is the title. There are other works of the ulama that have gone into much details in these affairs, and from them is the work of Hafiz al Hakimi, rahimahullah taala, and he has. Uh, he has uh, a poem uh, known as Sulam al Wusul, Ila Ilm al Usul, the stairs to ar- of arrival to the knowledge of the foundations and fundamentals, Fit Tawheed. And he has an explanation of that called Ma'arij al Qabul. In this poetry and in the explanation of that poetry, almost every issue with regards to Aqidah, he has touched on it and he has brought. Uh, Numerous evidences, sometimes almost giving every evidence available in the Quran and the Sunnah with regards to one issue. And uh, from those previous classes that we had, particularly on the Qadr, if somebody wanted to find more details about that, then this is the place to look. This is one of the first places to look in Ma'ariz al Qabul by Hafid al Hakimi rahimahullah ta'ala to find much of the details that uh, have been mentioned with regards to, to these affairs. This evening, because of the benefit. Uh, of that which is found in there, we read some of his statements with regards to Al Ihsan. And he mentioned that Al Ihsan, uh, that the Prophet وسلم, has informed us, and and that the level of Ihsan is on two levels. Because this is referring to the definition the Prophet وسلم, he has made of Ihsan in the hadith of Jibreel. And that hadith is coming with the author that we are reading from, inshaAllah. Uh, after we finish this portion of the text, bi'idnillahi ta'ala. And the Prophet defined al ihsan as, and ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarahu. This is the first level. Fa'illam tukun tarahu fa'innuhu yuraka. To worship Allah as if you see Him. And if you are not able to see Him, then to worship Him as knowing that He sees you. So these are the two stages. These are the two levels. So what does it mean? And what is intended by al ihsan? To worship Allah as if you see Him. Or to at least worship Allah knowing that He sees you. Now, Hafid al Hakimi, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he mentioned that al Maqam al Awwal wa huwa a'alahuma. And ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarahu. The first stage, the high, and it's the highest stage of Al Ihsan that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned, it is to worship Allah as if you see Him. As if you see Him. He says, Hada maqam al mushahada. This is considered the status of al mushahada. Al mushahada is whenever one he witnesses. And mushahada linguistically is to witness something with one's eyes, to see it, to see it directly. Shahada yushahidu shahid mushahadatan, to see something with one's eyes. But what is intended here? Worshiping Allah bil mushahada ka'anna katarahu. He says, "Wahuwa an yamal an yamal al abdu ala muktaba mushahadatihi Allah azza wa jal bi qalbihi." It is that the servant he will worship and he will move. And he will act according to what would it necessitates for him to witness Allah with his heart. So what is being referred to here? To worship him as if you see him at this high level of the deen, rather the highest level of the deen, to worship Allah as if you see him, not with the eyes. Because nobody can see the eyes. Nobody can see Allah with the, with the eyes in this life. Len tarani. Len tarani. He told Musa, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani meaning in this dunya. In this dunya. So nobody can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how do we worship Allah as if we see Him? Ah, as if we see Him with the heart. So this means here that a believer has to have knowledge of Allah. The more knowledge a believer has Allah of Allah, the more he will fear Him and be humble to Him and shy from Him and submit to Him and comply to Him and love Him and worship Him and strive to perfect that worship. The more knowledge he has. Then the more knowledge he has of Allah. The more the knowledge he has of Allah and that which is incumbent for him to know from the affairs of Islam and Iman, then this is how he will travel to this rank. By learning about Allah and his lordship, his rububiyyah and his authority and power. 
and knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from His ability to do all things, and knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise from His beautiful names and attributes of perfection, and knowing that nothing can harm Him or, or go against His will, and He is overpower, overpowering and all strong, the omnipotent, Al-Wahid, Al-Qahar, subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing Him by His names and attributes. In this manner, the, the, the believer can worship Allah as if he sees Him. And he, knowing him by his majesty, knowing him by his glory and his honor, Al Azim, Al Kabir, Al Muta'al, Wahu Al Ali, Al Kabir, knowing how, how great he is and how powerful he is and how strong he is, how wise he is, how knowledgeable he is, how merciful he is, how kind he is, Al Wadud, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, Al Latif, and how gentle he is with his, with his servants, Al Ra'uf, Al Rahim, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, the one who is powerful and strong yet merciful and kind, the one who has the ability to to do all things, who has given everything its shape and its form. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, by knowing him like this in this manner. And likewise, uh, by knowing him from his creation as well, and looking and seeing how, how great he is, and how and his majesty, and his glory, and how he creates in such a beautiful manner, and such a beautiful way, and how his creation is in such beautiful harmony, and how he disposes of the affairs of the creation in such a great way, and that he is the one who guides the hearts, and so much hardship that people have been through. But in the end, Allah is guiding their souls, and guiding their hearts to the right path, and to the right way. And maybe he will put hardship upon them only to bring them to good because they're believers and he guides them and he's with them. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing him in this manner and then worshiping him based upon this. And then worshiping him based upon that knowledge. The one who has more knowledge of Allah, he will be more afraid of him. And he will be seeking even, try, striving to get even closer to Allah by worshipping Him and by complying to His commandments. And will be further away from His sins. And this is the perfection of the worship. This is the perfection of the worship. So, Hafidh al Hakimi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, To strive and to work and to perform the actions according to what the, uh, the what it necessitates whenever a person he sees Allah with his heart meaning he knows him he knows him by his names and his attributes he knows him by his signs and in, in, in his creation and by the signs in, uh, in, in, in his Quran we have seen before we know Allah how do you know your Lord we've seen by his signs by his signs al Quraniya wal Kauniya. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has signs. And whenever a person knows him, then he will be able to reach this stage. Therefore, the people who are ignorant, they do not know the, the proper creed and belief in Allah, they cannot reach the stage of ihsan. It's not possible for them. And the author, he says, or excuse me, not the author, but Hafid al-Hakami. Rahimah Allah ta'ala, huwa, yani this, to see Allah with the heart, huwa an, an yatanawwaru. Wa huwa an yatanawwara al-qalabu bil-iman. And is that the the heart will be will be enlightened with faith? Whenever the heart becomes enlightened with faith, we have seen before our iman. What is in iman? It's knowledge. It's based upon knowledge. That means the heart becomes enlightened, full of light, the light of knowledge, the light of sincere faith and certainty. That the heart will be full of the light of faith, and that this insight of knowledge will pierce through his heart and understanding until the affairs that are unseen will seem to him like they are seen. It will be as if he sees them. Yani, the Jannah, he can't see it, but he believes in it, and his belief is so strong, and his heart is full of so much knowledge, and he knows the details uh, of the affairs of Jannah as if he sees it now, although he's not there. As if he can see it now because of the knowledge that he has and the descriptions that have come in the Quran and in the Sunnah and the light of faith that Allah has blessed him with. As if he sees it. He doesn't see the angels, but it's as if he, as if he sees them writing his deeds. This is aware. He's aware of that. He doesn't forget. 
He doesn't forget. The one who forgets that there are angels writing his deeds, you will find him in calamities. And you will find him in places that he does not belong. You will find his tongue saying things that is not proper. You will find his eyes looking at things that are not befitting. So on and so forth. But the one who remembers it's strong, his heart is full of the light of faith. The faith in Allah first and foremost. First and foremost, and then the angels as well. And the, and the messengers and the books and the last day which has preceded. And the decree of Allah Azza wa Jalla is full of the, of the light of faith then this insight will pierce through his heart and he will be able to see things as if it's in front of him. And he will have no doubt whatsoever. And he will have no doubt whatsoever. فَمَنْ عَبَدَ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ عَلَى اسْتِحْضَارِ قُرْبِهِ مِنْهُ وَإِكْبَارِهِ عَلَيْهِ وَأَنَّهُ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ كَأَنَّهُ يَرَاهُ أَوْجَبَ لَهُ ذَلِكَ الْخَشَّةَ وَالْخَوْفَ وَالْحَيْبَةَ وَالْتَعْبِيمِ So he said, Rahimahullah, that whoever worships Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, with while remembering this and bringing this uh, belief present to his mind and remembering how near Allah is to him and he, by way of his knowledge and remembering uh, how uh, he must uh, devote himself entirely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as if he sees him, he sees him the most high. He knows that he's above his throne in a manner befitting his majesty. He knows that he is the most gracious and kind. He knows that he's the most powerful and strong. He knows that he is a slave and created by him. He knows that he can't do anything except with his will. He knows that his affairs are in his hands entirely and that they have been written with him and he can't go outside of his commandment. And he complies to him, he submits to him and he remembers this and this is in his mind whenever he worships Allah Azza wa Jal. It's like he's worshiping as if, as if he sees him and he's seeing him with his heart. And this time he will worship him uh, and it, this will bring in his heart uh, the, the love and honor and reverence and fear of Allah and magnification and glorification that he deserves. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is some more things to discuss with regards to this. Of course, the next level of al Ihsan. And inshallah we continue in the next class. Hand that was Allah, Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.